Aya, and welcome back to Monster Village. The game that teaches us that... Jin's tears are truly sad. He could, like, start crying and we would drop everything just for him. Anyways, let's just hop right in. Wait, so... Let me get this straight. You're gonna be defending these monsters, Jack. Sorry, I know you call them villagers and whatnot, but after what just happened... Believe what you will, you're biased because you're a hunter, and I am biased because I'm a scrivener. You both have our jobs here, I need to do my investigation, and you just need to watch me so I don't run away or something. It's not like I'm gonna be running away, having the guild on my tail is gonna be a pain on the ass. F fine but it won't help in your investigation. My loyalty is still with the guild. That's all I ask. Watch over me. So what are we doing here? I need to check on the hunter that was attacked. But he's in a coma, and I need to speak to the one tending him. Besides, you hunters are the ones using our resident feline medic. Ugh. Hello, Grano? After a few seconds, I heard one of the door opens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're here. Thank you again for bringing the commander. I'd like to hear what happened, but maybe we can talk about it after this. Of course, Nya. Yeah. Oh, before I forget. Grano reaches into one of his pockets and brought out my badge. This helped us a lot, Nya. Yeah. But I promised the commander to return it to Nya. Yeah. Scrivener's badge has been added to my... <laughs> that is a fucking ace attorney reference. Thank you. Maybe earning this badge was worth it after all. But of course, I'm here for a different reason. You wanted to see the injured hunter, Nya. I want to show Nya. But... Grano gave a side eye towards Jack. Hello, I am Jack. Um, do you trust Nya? I don't really have a choice since he needs to monitor me or something. But I think he'll be able to help, he will be able to help me though. I need a hunter anyway to question later. Hey, I just said I ain't. If not, then he will just watch me so I don't do anything the guild doesn't want. That's rough, Nya. This isn't a walk near the beach for me, either. Anyway, can you tell me more about the victim? I don't know much about himself, Nya. From what I can tell, they are a high rank hunter from the quality of their armor. I see. His name is Largo. Oh, thought you don't want to help. Uh, it's like I wanted to. But seeing you two so sad just makes me feel so bad and all. What? Sundere. Very Sundere, Nya. Do you want the info or not? What can you tell us, Jack? He's my senior, Largo. He's a high rank hunter and someone I look up to. Unlike the Admiral, Sir Largo is not really a professional hunter. He often jokes during hunts, but also plays around when in a new location. But even when he is not serious, he always finishes the quest faster and better than anyone I've met. I even heard rumors he'll get another rank up soon and might get a position as a vice commander. Hmm. Then how did an experienced hunter got put into a coma when it was a villager that attacked? Something doesn't add up. Sorry, I cannot give more info. I haven't been working with Sir Largo for long enough to know much about him. How long have you known him? Ever since I joined as a hunter. That's fine. I can work with something like that. Huh? Just him being a high rank hunter is already a big clue. What do you mean? Think about it. If you were attacked by someone from this village who has never experienced fighting before, they would immediately lose because they're against a high rank. This means there is something else involved. Grano, can you tell me about their injuries or anything? I already did an autopsy, Nya. An autopsy? But the guy isn't dead, right? I don't think so. We checked this morning and he was still breathing. I just want to call it that, Nya. Reminds me of my good old days. Okay. What did you find? His head was covered in blood when I first saw him, Nya. What made me curious is that there were no wounds. No open wounds, no bruises, not even signs of attack on the body, Nya. Wait, he was bloody but didn't have any wounds. I checked all his body, but I didn't notice what caused him to be unconscious. What is it? Back of the head, Nya. It was a big indent around here. Hey! Grano grabbed Jack by the arms and pulled him down, then circled around Jack's head to showcase where the indent is. Could you just ask me to kneel? Nya, here's where it was, just a little on the left. Partner that with almost drowning, it'll be a few more days before he wakes up. He practically had a concussion, huh? Correct, Nya. I have no doubt from drowning in a hard hit on the head caused him to go into a coma. 
You already gave him medicine, yeah. He should wake up in a few more days. Can you let go of me now? Grano then released his hold on Jack. Bruno Polico, you're pretty strong. I'm retired from the guild, yeah. Something is still bugging me here. Grano, what was the armor he was wearing before the accident? I don't have it, yeah. The Admiral took it, yeah. I didn't see it clearly for any clues. I see. What did the Admiral have to take? Was there something he noticed? It's not like I can ask him directly for this anyway. I'm sure he would just spun up some lies about it being evidence or whatever. And I guess I just don't want to talk to him right now. Thanks for your help, Grano. Yeah, I wrote down more of the details about the injury. I made a copy for the Admiral because he asked for it. Medical report has been added to my records. You mentioned earlier that they almost drowned. Doubt they did from the river here since it's really shallow. They didn't tell me anything, Nya. I am sorry, Nya. Wait. The river connects to the waterfall. You haven't been there yet, have you? I don't really have time, Nya. You said they almost drowned, and that's the closest body of water here. So that's the next thing I should check. Thank you. You should get some rest as well. You've had a long run. Thank you. Jack, let's go. We need to check the waterfall while there's still sun out. What? I told you I am not your assistant. Bitch, you are our assistant. Hey, where are you going? Weren't you listening? I'm going to the waterfall. You can't leave this place. Look, you just want to make sure I don't run away, so just follow me. Hell, run in front of me if you want. Ugh, working with Scrivener is such a pain. Better hurry up, because I am going with or without you. Fine, we're going back once you're done investigating. Started to jog towards the waterfall. Kept following the river, keeping in mind about the location of everything here. Just as I suspected, it's very shallow for everyone, for anyone to drown here. But just after a few more minutes, we finally arrived. Oh, wow, this place actually looks pretty nice during the day. Yeah, it's where me and... Wait. Huh? You just said this place looks good during the day. Yeah. Meaning you've been here at night. Jack? You were here during the accident. I... I'll ask you later. I need to survey the area a bit. Ugh. Tore out a page in my notebook and started to sketch the area. From the shape to the spaces, I tried to be as accurate as I can. Once I finished sketching, I looked into the water to find anything that can be a clue. There is something shiny near the waters. Walked over to the edge and picked up the shiny object. Bowgun bullet has been added to my records. A bowgun bullet? Ah! Jack? N nothing Ugh. Jack looks uncomfortable all of a sudden. Could it be... Jack? You saw what happened during the accident. I... Tell me what happened. S sorry, Sir Asher. I... What is it? The Admiral told me not... To say anything about what happened. What? So the Admiral is preventing you on telling me what happened. He gave me a nod. Jack, come on. Actual lives are at stake here. I won't even say it came from you. I just need to know what happened here. Sorry, Sir Asher. I don't want to risk my position. Your position? I worked hard to be a hunter. I'm not going to risk all of that just on some monsters. So please, don't make this harder on me. I'm just here to watch over you. Fine. Let me just ask you some questions and you can answer how you see fit. Prepare the lug punting machine. We're just gonna throw lug. Lug, hope you don't mind. We're just gonna throw you at Jack. Uh, destroy Jack however you see fit. Nah, don't send cats. Send lug. Lug is a lot deadlier. Cannibalism. <laughs> Sometimes torture is the answer. I think we do all of these. What can you tell me before the incident? I guess I can say something about that. I was working with Sir Largo when we got a request to check this forest by the Admiral with him. We thought it was weird we didn't have anything happening at the moment, so we agreed. It was a heavy storm and we were having trouble finding a place to camp. I remember there was a heavy rainfall a few days ago. I also had the worst stomach ache ever. Huh? Nothing. Continue. We got on top of the waterfall over there, and Sir Largo said he will go down and check for any caves we can settle in. And? And? I don't know. You don't know, or cannot say. I see. 
Jack must really want to keep his job. Either that or the Admiral is just that much of a scary boss. Is there anything else? Did you ever see the attacker? I... Mm, can't answer this one too. He gave me a nod. I'm sorry. It's fine. Actually, your response of not wanting to answer actually gives me the answer. Huh? You did see the attacker. That's how the Admiral knew that it was a Zenogre. Originally thought the Admiral was a witness, but this makes things easier. Eh. It's fine. I already suspected someone as was a witness. But I guess I cannot ask much more about the details, huh? Yeah. So Jack saw Jin that night as attacking Sir Largo. I doubt his memory, but... Is that all? Did anyone else see the attacker or the accident? It's only me. Really? Jack nodded with a sigh. You don't look convincing. No, it's really just me. I guess all this is making me dizzy. Sorry, just a little longer. We should head back if there's nothing else. I really don't want to get in trouble. Before that, I'd like to ask one more thing. Sir Asher, I already explained, took out my sketch from earlier and showed it to his face. Huh? Where did you find his unconscious body? He is in a coma, and if he almost drowned and had a concussion, he must have been found here somewhere. I... You don't need to say anything, just point. Here. That far from the waterfall. This is also the same area where I found the bullet. Thanks, you've been a great help regardless. Scene sketch has been added to my records. I still have a bit of time, but it feels like I'm missing a few things. Sir Asher, we really need to go back now. Fine. It, it seems I've checked as much as I can here anyway. Where do I even go from here? For now, I need to go back home and collect all that I know so far. I slowly opened the door, trying not to make any large noises since the housekeeper might still be asleep here. Jack wanted to stay outside since he wanted to get a bit of rest because I dragged him to the waterfall. Looks like he wanted some alone time too. Once he got in, I was surprised to see someone else instead. C commander So this is where you've been occupying. Seems you've kept everything here clean. You must have gotten some assistance from that strange feline. <sighs> I forgot to ask his name. Sir, I... Wh what brings you here? I want to see the village with my own eyes. I already ordered my men to provide some of our rations to the residents. Thank you, sir. Does this mean... Young Asher, as you know, I am a commander. I know this quest is from me directly. I cannot show favoritism among, among my ranks. Doing so would harm my impartial view. It will only cause chaos in our group. Then, would it be okay if I asked Jin about the accident since he was accused? Please, sir. I cannot allow that. What? Why? As much as I want to believe you, I cannot push aside the possibility that one of the villagers have harmed our men. I'm sure you understand that our men come first when it comes to conflict between parties. I know, but... This is also to give both of you an equal chance. Both of us? Did not allow the Admiral to question any of the residents. I see no reason why I should give you one if I denied his. I... That is why I've given you this chance to convince all of us tomorrow. I'm counting on you. Huh? I'm putting my trust in you, so that you will do what is right. Remember, you will need to prove the village's innocence beyond doubt to all hunters gathered. And I also want to see if that man was right. Man? I leave the rest to you. I've already discussed with the village elder and with young feeling taking care of him now. Of course the admiral disagreed, but he was being cooperative. I can at least allow him to have some assistance. First thing tomorrow morning, the village elder and our hunters will be hearing your arguments. Best you prepare. Y yes sir! The commander gave a nod and walked to the door. Oh, and you might want to check under your bed. The elder said that it might get uncomfortable when you sleep later. Sir? Not saying anything else, he went outside and closed the door. <laughs> Why are you just sleeping there? C Commander! Sir! What are you doing here? Uh, come, I need to speak with you. Uh. I look out the window and see Jack hunched over, defeated as he follows behind the commander. I pray for his soul, and for him to keep his job. The bed. Move the bed and notice some of the planks were moved. How did I not notice this before? Looked inside the hole and it seems to be a small chest. Picked it up, and despite it being underground and hidden, there is no dust or dirt on it. It's like it was just placed. Did the commander just put this here, or maybe he found it? Open it and found a few things inside. Some ores, what looks like a small booklet, and a letter? There's no recipient, so this might not be a letter, but just an envelope. Better a bunch of notes with dates on them. These date back several years ago. It's amazing how much of the ink has not faded. Let's see. Day 3. Afternoon. Still can't wrap my head around this place. Not even sure if it's good luck that I did. Sometimes I think I shouldn't have found this place. 
Ever since that Yan Garuga that I was tracking attacked my leg, I've been have having trouble staying productive while I rest. Nice thing that the Elder is allowing me to stay, though. The Rajong I met told me to just stay here at the Elder's house and stay hidden away from other residents. It might cause a panic, they say. Which is weird, because I'm a human in a village that's full of monsters. I believe I read about them, too. True Avarians. Huh? Another human stayed here? This is big, but what the hell does this even mean? Judging from the writing, it seems this person was tracking a Yan Garuga and was attacked on his leg. Rajong? Does he mean Gerald? Was he the one who found this guy? Regardless, I continue to read what happened to this person. I might find something useful. Day 7. Night. A few felines stopped by today. They said they wanted to help the village, but don't know anything on how to serve larger species. They must be the wild felines the Elder mentioned. I thought I can help them by explaining some basic stuff I learned from the guild. A scrivener always comes prepared when it's about information. I still had these books on me. They were fast learners too. They immediately got the idea for building structures, even some basic trading principles. Even I took a while learning these. I have a feeling the village will get larger in the future. I might, I might get even assigned here from Dundorma. A scrivener? I still have my job, after all. Uh, you're right. A scrivener always needs to be moving to keep us safe. You know about scriveners? Nah! Yeah, he certainly knows what it is. Never mentioned it at all. Yes, I know what they are. But do me a solid, let's not talk about it right now. I'd rather not let my boys hear our conversation. Now this explains how Gerald knew what Scriveners are, and why he didn't want Leo and Jin knowing about it. Maybe I can assume the Elder and Gerald knew about the Scrivener. It sounds like they are hiding him from the locals until he recovers. The other notes just mention about other things he talked about to the Elder. Mostly all the things the Elder told me already, like true Avarians, trading, the village. Hmm? This one looks smudged. A lot of the ink has just faded off. Day 9. M Since my leg is recovered, finally, but I was thinking of maybe villagers first. I told the Elder about True Ver, but I got an invitation by Scarlet. I think he knows about them, and leave my notes here for anyone to see. I hope everyone... It's so hard to read. Considering this is Day 9 and nothing else follows, I can only assume this was the last letter before he left. Old Scrivener's Notes has been added to my records. Why did the commander wanted me to see this? Was he the Scrivener? Heh, <laughs> that cannot be. If anything, the commander never became one and was immediately hired by the guild after his training, or so he told me. Put the plank back in its place and lay down on the bed. Tomorrow will be a tough fight for me. I have to protect the village and prove Jin's innocence. I closed my eyes as my mind began to wander. Even after the mentally exhausting days, I still can keep my mind calm and started overthinking things. What if I fail this? What will happen to the village? Am I going to lose my job? I sat back up and looked at my notebook that I have been writing down my thoughts in for the past few days. Am I really doing this? The confidence I've built up. The friends I've made along the way. Did I do something wrong to risk it all? If there is anything that I need to decide now, my heart or what I worked so hard for, if I would have to lose one, which one do I keep? Which one brings me more happiness and satisfaction? If I'm to decide now, I need to look back to my past, my own choices. I opened my journal and read my story again. The past few days were a lot of fun. I was under a lot of stress at first, but I guess my natural curiosity made it more enjoyable. The elder and his housekeeper were really welcoming despite me being a human. Then again, I just found out that I wasn't the first. So maybe that is why they were so calm about it. It took me a while and I visited several new places in the village. Despite being hidden, it honestly feels lively and nice here, too. The village's sustenance was actually impressive, having their own farm and own way for feeding themselves, especially the wishberries that are cultivated here. And those that are too much are sent for trading. But the heart of the village, of course, are its residents, one Wavarian attached to me for the entire time I stayed here. Jin, the Zenogar true Wavarian. He was so quiet and shy at first that I sometimes wonder if I'm actually the right guy that should be talking with him. Me being a human and all. What I just don't know is that Jin seems to be very interested in me too. He has a natural look to his face when he asks me stuff and it just lights up. It's not like it's curiosity, but after a while, he started to open up to me more and more. Sometimes Jin tries to avoid saying anything. And I used to think that he's just shy, but after knowing him... He was staying quiet because he doesn't want to remember the past. 
I promised Jin that I will hang out with him more. It was kind of a surprise to me because he kind of took the initiative for someone who barely talks. Jin just brought me to his room and we just read. The entire situation sounds kind of funny now because I could have said so many things at the time. To be honest, I don't mind just him being in the same room with me, even if we don't talk. And his sensual pose on the bed was... <laughs> Kind of funny to think now that he did that because he wanted to flirt like his brother, Leo. I kind of want to stay and be closer to him at the same time. But I don't want to rush because the last thing I want to ruin is his trust in me. Jin mostly kept to himself whenever I am with him. But I also notice a lot more just by looking at him. Despite his large size, he has pretty delicate hands. His writing looks so smooth and all the details of his work shine through. Even I don't put that much detail in my own sketches. When he does it, it looks too natural. It made me wonder if he worked for the guild. Would he have made a huge difference? The more I got so interested in him as a person, the more my feelings started to grow. It's like I want to be with him and help him shine brighter. So I decided to invite him to the waterfall the day after that. Once we got alone with each other at the waterfall... He started to talk more. I guess it's true that some shy people will talk normally around lesser groups. We continued our small banter here and there, and Jin started to mention his best friend Leia. She is a Rathian Wavarian as well. As he gushed about her, I kind of felt a little bit jealous because it was so sincere. Though the jealousy only lasted for a little while since he started talking about his dick size. This is where I should have gotten the hint that Jin is not really that innocent. I don't know why people, including myself, correlate shy with innocence. After we were done, he became more confident talking to me. He started to start more conversations. He started to not hold back. He was even okay with me looking most of the time. Although the next day, I did get a visit from his best friend, Leia. She is the kind of woman that likes to shoot first, ask later. Honestly, I thought I was going to pass out that day. It's a good thing Jin was there to save me before she choked me to death. A lot of back and forth was said, and apparently Jin was having nightmares of his past. Jin was originally from Yukumo, or at least outside of the village in the springs. His dad was a hunter, but he and his mother were both true Wavarians. It all changed one night when they both died in front of his eyes. Wavarian or not, this is that is traumatic to anyone. It's no wonder he's so silent. He isn't just shy, but also scared. It was an irony, and even cruel fate, that Jin's most loved villagers are also the same type as what killed his parents. But even after all that, he does what he can to look forward. He won't stand by and just give up the love, the life his parents saved. Even Leo and Leia are doing their best so they can support Jin, who has lost so much. And I plan to stay by his side and help him too. Not only to recover, but also to remind him that he is loved. I only hope that Jin would stay strong as well. Not just for everyone, but for himself too. Though the next days were not really fun for me. I got food poisoning the other day and I was taken care of by Grano, the village's very own feline medic. He was an old guild medic that got lost and found his way here in the village, where he now has a bigger purpose of helping everyone here. But while I was sick, the hunters attacked. Grano tried to help me by keeping me quiet and explaining the situation, eventually looking for the commander with the housekeeper. If it weren't for them, everything would have gotten much worse. This village saved me and I've yet to pay them back for all they have done for me. What kind of person would I be if I were to abandon this now? I need to return the favor to the village that is taking care of me. We're locking in. <laughs> Silence. We will now begin the hearing for this monster village. <laughs> fucking Ace Attorney. Believe it or not, I fucking loved Ace Attorney growing up, so this is going to be fun as hell. I assume both parties have collected their arguments to be presented. Sir, we'd like to object about the monster in front of us. Yeah! Why is that monster here? Our lives will be in danger when he attacks. 
Silence! I have discussed with this resident in private already, along with your admiral. He becomes even a little bit aggressive. He accepted that he that it will be proved as proof as an admission of guilt. That is correct, my fellow hunters. The commander. <laughs> 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 fucking Edgeworth. I'm so fucking fucking Edgeworth. <laughs> That is the Edgeworth pose. That is the fucking Edgeworth pose. Hey, mom, can we have Edgeworth? No, we have Edgeworth at home. Edgeworth at home. <laughs> it's beautiful. The commander even allowed me to carry a weapon under this table if things were to get difficult. <laughs> <laughs> down you haven't even heard our arguments yet and you already brand the elder monster what kind of hunters are you uh, calm down sir asher we are only here to protect ourselves are you not supposed to be the one to assume they are safe and us to assume they are dangerous this that isn't phoenix right that's pigeon wrong no pigeon left we are no longer Phoenix right. We are now Pigeon left. Pigeon left. I'm going to put that up there real quick. Pigeon left. Dull worthless and Pigeon left. Hang on. Let me... I played all the Ace Attorney games, including Spinoffs. Alrighty, spin alrighty. I'm having a fang awesome that would put cats' orgasms to shame. Dull Worthless versus Pigeon Left. I'm just gonna put that right there. Pigeon Left. Nice Dull Worthless versus Pigeon Left. You are not supposed Yeah, I already read that. Is it not my responsibility to protect my men first? You are really rotten. You are free to think on your delusions. I am only doing what is right for my men and what is just. Ugh. You're just toying with me and the villagers at this point. That far you want, Admiral? I will be the one to prove Jin innocent. But now that everyone is here, I will show how much you are just unfit to be anyone's leader. What I just don't understand is where are you getting this unfounded hate and fear from? Besides, this is already something you requested, right? Are we not just playing your game? At least you have the decency to wear your uniform. Is this really necessary, though? The entire room is set up like some sort of trial. Even you look different for some reason. Does it bother you? Entertainment like this only comes once in a lifetime. I'm crushing you, of course! Are you not the one actually having fun here? Because you're about to fail. Everything feels like a game now that you set up to sate your ego. Such disrespect! Enough! We will start- We will still talk to each other respectfully. I will not have everyone here act as if they are uneducated. Now I will give you both chances to give your arguments, counters, and evidences. The room is made as such that it will accommodate everyone, and I'd prefer to keep things professional here. Am I understood? Yes, apologies, Commander. I'm sorry, sir! Very well. Let us begin by hearing the Admiral with his reasoning on his actions on the village. Here we go, Asher. This is it. Try to be sure to listen and choose my answers carefully. I can only bluff as much before my credibility drops. Thank you, Commander. Your Honor, he is a stinky poo-poo. I rest my case. For the simplicity of this case, I will be referring to two different parties. The victim, Sir Largo, 
who was attacked about four days ago and is now in a comatose state. <clears throat> and the suspect, the monstrous Zenogre that attacked Sir Largo unprompted. I'd request for the Admiral to refer to the suspect with his name. The Zenogre's name is Jin. It would be unfair to treat them as such. I demand respect from the Admiral to these villagers. I agree. Admiral, you are to refer to the suspect with their name, Sir Jin. So you want to play like that, huh? Very well. Yes, Commander. I will continue. The suspect, Mr. Jin, attacked the victim four days ago while we were in the area. In the area? We received reports of some monsters becoming active in the forest lately. I also personally checked the guild members assigned here, and only one has not sent a report yet. That would be Sir Asher over there. Given the circumstances, I took the liberty of investigating the area. Are we not in this situation because you just didn't send a report sooner? You may be new, but I want to remind you that being a guild scrivener is not a vacation. I... I was not able to send my report because I still have another day to stay in the village before returning. I've gotten sick that day, but I don't think I should say anything about that. That may be, but you could have returned for a few days and came back and come back to report it. Not to mention the recommendation letter I received from the felines you sent were proof you could have. Well... I didn't think about that. The Admiral's investigation here is justified. You may continue. Thank you, Commander. The incident occurred during a heavy rainstorm. We were above a rather high cliff near the waterfall, and Sir Largo wanted to go first to see if there was any place to rest. However, he did not return, so one of my other hunters decided to check up on him. I have to say, because of his nimble body and light armor, I thought it would be fine if he went ahead. Most of my men are wearing heavy armor. By the time we were able to go down the waterfall safely, we saw the suspect on top of the victim. Unfortunately, we were not able to see anything because of the rain. By the time we were able to approach Sir Largo, he was already unconscious and the suspect escaped. One of our hunters did note it had a Xenogre's characteristics. I see. Does the Scrivener have any comments on this? This is it. This is my first chance to prove Jin innocent. Yes, sir. I have some doubts about the Admiral's claims. You accuse Jin to have attacked Sir Largo, but... Do you have any proof of motive? Proof? Does the burden of proof not fall on you since you are defending these monsters? They look like monsters down to the exact detail, and there is no other reason I should explain why they are not. It is of nature they attack because they are monsters. But please, enlighten us. Tell me, if they are not monsters, what makes them so different? They are far from being monsters because... Ooh. Uh... Fuck. Oh, they're both correct. Okay, well, they're intelligent. The answer is really simple. It is because they are intelligent. They have the ability to grow crops here and do trading. Do you think that these villagers you call monsters will resort to murder for food? They have the intelligence to talk and build a society. There is no reason for them to be branded as monsters. And do you not think that intelligence that intelligent humans kill? It is also human nature that we hunt to protect ourselves. Is it not correct to think that there are certain monsters with high intelligence as well? Though I can appreciate you did do your research while being here. But unless you can give me actual evidence in just sweet words, your argument is as useful as an empty gum lance. Ugh. I should have seen that one coming. I'm going to convince anyone here I need to show him his proof while covering it with my own evidence. Indulge me then, Admiral. What is your proof that they are dangerous outside of your own claims? Let me call upon my decisive witness. Witness? Were you not listening? I mentioned earlier that one of our hunters followed after the victim. We can listen to his testimony and should be enough for you to see the truth of the bigger picture. Very well. I will make sure to verify this truth that you value so much. It's cross-examination time with Jack. Hunter, please state your name and rank for the records. Uh, oh, is this going to be part of my permanent records? This will be part of your records to the guild, but it does not affect your hunting record. I would also like to remind you and everyone in this room about perjury. We, not, we may not be inside an official courtroom, however, I will require the same level of honesty. Perjury? Y you mean like lying? I'll be as honest as I can about the details, sir. My name is Jack, and I'm a rank 2 hunter. I guess everyone here knows me. Yes, rookie. For, for formality, we will refer to you as your name on the records. Now tell us what happened that night. So I just need to recount everything, right? Um, let's see... Witness testimony. I believe this was happening about four nights ago. I remember it was raining down pretty hard. 
We were on a cliff. Sir Largo said he would go on ahead and check down if there are any caves we can rest in. After a few minutes, I got worried, so I asked the Admiral if I can check up on him. Once I got down, I saw Sir Largo on the ground and what looked like a Zenogre over his body. I saw a lot of Sir Largo's blood trailing from the river. It must be his wounds from being attacked. By the time the Admiral got down the cliff, the Zenogre had escaped into the forest. I see. The victims separated from your group to scout the area to find shelter. However, when you haven't heard from them after a few minutes, you followed the trail and saw him being attacked. I see no issues with this testimony. Of course, sir. I only offer the truth of the situation with nothing else to hide. That is why his testimony is as strong as Kamara Steel. Mm-hmm. I agree. But since he is your witness, young Ash will begin his cross-examination. Cross-examination? Commander, is this really necessary? To ensure fairness, he has a right to question his testimony. You are free to ask any questions regarding his testimony and present any evidence you have that may relate to it. I see. That was weird, too, when I first heard his testimony. My instincts are telling me that it's not even as hard as steel. Focus, are there any contradictions in Jack's testimony? I can somehow spot a crack or anything that seems out of place. I need to prove it. Okay... said he would go on ahead and check down if there are any caves we can rest in. Okay. Hang on. Four nights ago? Are you sure this is the same incident that occurred? I think so. You think? Are you not sure of your memory? No! I am sure of it! It was hard to forget because the rain drenched all of my torches. And it's still very recent. I was really shocked, so it is hard to forget. I guess it makes sense. Okay. Why did Sir Largo want to stray from the group? They could have taken their time with it and all came down at the same time. I originally asked if I can come with him, but he said it would be faster if it were just one person. Sir Largo always looked out for everyone, and I admired him for that. The rain was not letting up, and we would just be a burden to each other. And it kind of made sense, because everyone was wearing pretty heavy armor, and I just had this... Velocipre armor. I see. You're the only one who volunteered? I was probably the only one on speaking terms with Sir Largo. I always believe that not a long talk to him because he is such a good hunter and everyone else is envious. Maybe if we waited a bit longer, someone else would have asked. I guess I got worried too fast. I can attest that they have known each other for a while now. Though doubting their relationship has no bearing on this case. Are you finished? <laughs> guess that's a no-go. Are you sure you sure the one you saw looked like a Zenogre? Yeah, I am very sure it was a Zenogre. I also remember seeing white hair and yellow horns on his head. That definitely sounds like Jin. Judging by how he described him, it doesn't sound like he was lying. Hmm, you need to approach this differently. How can you be sure the wound he has were caused by Jin? Before we set off, Sir Largo and I changed into our armor, together along with other hunters back in Dundorma. I didn't see any fresh wounds on Sir Largo, and the wounds he did have were just scars. We haven't encountered any other monster by the time we got to the waterfall, so I just assumed it was during the time he went ahead of us. There's something fishy about what he said, but the problem is figuring out what. Maybe I can show him that evidence. And evidence first. First choose... The testimony that you want to contradict and click the other. Okay. Okay. How long was the interval between you seeing Jin and the Admiral arriving? I don't think I can give any accurate time on that. But thinking about it, I think it was only a minute or two. That's pretty long for a standoff. Why didn't you do anything? What was stopping you from calling help or even helping the victim? I was scared, because I didn't know what I was looking at and got cold feet. I mean, that was the first time I saw something like that. I didn't know what to do. Maybe if I only moved. 
okay. Pretty sure it's this. Hang on. We gotta think about this. Keyword here is blood. Okay. Oh shit! Oh shit! Maybe. Blunt trauma and signs of almost drowning, bloodied head but no wounds. Jack, you seem to be lying through your teeth. I was? I'm not sure if you remember, but the victim didn't have any wounds. According to this medical report, the body did not have any wounds. And I quote, Sir Largo did not sustain any injuries prior to being in the village. The body was covered in blood, yet there were no such wounds it could have came from. We're wrong? So, if the body did not sustain any wounds, how was a suspect able to harm them? Eh! Uh, well, m maybe it's, um... Sir Asher, may I ask where did you get this report from? It was given to me by the fe village's own medical feline, Grano. And what time were you given this report? Huh? Went to him yesterday morning to check the victim and I requested a medical report. Remember correctly, it was just an hour after the commander arrived. My, how unfortunate. Admiral, your point being? That medical report is outdated, Commander. What? Since the commander arrived with the doctor, I took the liberty of asking him to check the victim. And of course, draft a second medical report. Seems the medical feline of yours was not thorough enough to see the wounds. A bit sad, to be fair. Doctor from the guild was here? I see. Young Asher, after listening to the felines you've sent, I brought along a doctor to check the situation. What didn't account for was the village's medical feline. And there you have it. A licensed and well-respected guild doctor has given their medical opinions on this. Once he had finished undoing your feline's patchy bandages, you noticed the chest had what looked like scratch marks on them. Ergo, wouldn't it have been implausible to still that the suspect attacked Sir Largo. I. but that can't be. I was there in the morning. I had a feeling there was something different. Young Asher, when I visited Sir Largo before I came to your place, I was with the doctor. There was a wound on the chest by the time I saw it. What? I... That doesn't make sense. Did Grano give me the wrong report, or did he actually... No, I don't think Grano would have betrayed me. This only means that the Admiral did something to the victim after I left. So there you go, Commander. The Scrivener's argument is already crumbling. What's wrong, Scrivener? You look like you have something to say. I'M A SHAM! <laughs> That's the answer! I'M A SHAM! Probably the doctor is a sham. Your ass is fake, bitch. Our ass is fake. The Admiral's a sham. Shame. What, what reason could you possibly have to request another medical report? Young Ashra will not allow you to attack their character. It is all right, Commander. I'm sure he was fooled by the feline, so I wouldn't blame him. I see. Mm. No, he didn't fool me. I knew he gave me the right information. Otherwise, I would even write it down to begin with. Now I have to question him later, but right now... Maybe it's best if I hold on to this updated report. The medical report has been added to my records. Looks like there's nothing else to discuss. And I guess there's no other reason to prolong this. Let us end this because we are behind schedule. Already? Can't let it end like this. Come on, think! Wait. Looking at the medical reports, I noticed there was something that both the doctor and Grano seem to agree on. Does this mean... Ah! Uh, um, so does that mean I can go now? Yes, you can join your fellow hunters. Okay, I think I'll just... Stop right there! Wait right there! Huh? Is there anything else you would need from him? Yes, Commander. There's still something he has yet to explain. I... What? What is the meaning of this? 
The witness explained what happened after finding Sir Largo, but he didn't explain what happened after that. I request a witness to revise his testimony to include what happened after. Is this really important to the case? Young Asher, what would be the reason to ask this? It is because... There was still something in that medical report that needs an explanation, since here the victim suffered from drowning and blunt trauma on their head. This would be the reason why they are in a coma right now. The witness have yet to say anything about this at all. Explain yourself! What are you talking about? Really, Admiral? Thought you would be the first to notice. What? If you look closely at both the medical reports Grano and your doctor gave, there is one part that the witness did not clarify. Notice you have yet to mention this at all as well, Admiral. You really claim that your witness saw everything? Where was the explanation from drowning? Well, you see, I... Uh... Commander, this is absurd. This is a basic conjecture. D oh, I assure you it's quite based. I was unsure if the doctor's notes were real, but if the report actually says you drowned, then we are not getting the full explanation. What in the shred are you talking about? Think about it. You said you found the suspect on top of the victim and then ran away. That doesn't actually explain how he attacked him. For all we know, it might be something different. The witness only saw the situation after everything has occurred. If I am right. We're based! Yes! Jin didn't attack the victim. He might have actually saved the victim from drowning. This, that is just an opinion. What proof do you have that is actually what happened? My proof is this. The evidence that proves that the victim may have drowned. The fuck, it's this? It's the bow gun bullet? Is it actually the bullet? Or is it the it's the medical report? Oh, okay. The medical report that you so requested. If the information wasn't so critical, then they didn't have to put in this part. However, the fact that it says here that the victim drowned, it means we cannot remove the idea that the victim may have been the one hostile to the suspect. Silence! Admiral, is this true? Y yes Commander. The report does say that Sir Largo drowned before being wounded as per the doctor's autopsy. I thought it was irrelevant because... Admiral, there is no information irrelevant in a hearing. I expect full transparent information from the both of you. I cannot give my ruling unless there is an even a small possibility that the suspect did not attack the victim. C Commander, you don't! Admiral, that is enough. Did not give you the same treatment earlier. It is your responsibility to give me the truth. You understand the consequences to go against my fair ruling here? Now instruct your witness. Ugh. Yes, Commander. I somehow was able to climb my way out of that. Now I just have to keep this momentum up. Oh, Admiral, seeing your upset face really flustered like that really motivates me to work harder. Rookie! Explain what happened more in detail after you found the victim. Y yes sir After finding the body. After I was given permission by the Admiral to go check, I went down the cliff slowly since I had a lot of trouble. When I found the Zenogre and Sir Largo, I was too afraid to move. All I can see from far away was Zenogre. We had a bit to think what to do, but then I heard the Admiral calling for me. That's when the Zenogre stood up and ran away. Luckily the Admiral saw what I saw and told me to give chase to it. I tried to chase into the forest, but eventually I lost him. That's when I turned back and tended to Sir Largo, who was already unconscious. Hmm. So you gave chase to the suspect, but you were not able to catch up. I I'm sorry, Commander. The rain was too strong and it was really dark, so I had trouble seeing. Very well. Young Asher, you may begin your cross-examination. Thank you, Commander. This one sounds much stronger than before. I need to question these claims more if I'm able to get anywhere. <sighs> okay. 
You had a lot of trouble. Well, it was raining hard after all. Going down a cliff like that made me scared of slipping and falling, slipping up and falling. I almost did too. Then why didn't you ask help from the other hunters? I was the only one in our group wearing light armor. Actually, I was surprised Rolargo got down that fast considering he wore high-grade iron armor. I see. Too afraid. Are you not a hunter? Shouldn't it be in your instincts to move first be before thinking if the situation is as dangerous as you described it? I know already! Eh? I already felt like a damn coward. I know I should have done more for Sir Largo. I just joined the Hunter's Guild recently, too. I... Young Asher, is it not rare for new hunters to be scared during their first days? Being stationary as a hunter is not good, but after checking his records, he has not gotten any large monster experience yet. Yes, Commander. Apologies. You heard the Admiral. I was able to snap back when the Admiral called for me. It was because of him that I was able to move. Of course I can confirm that. Unless you plan to say something stupid like a... Kurapeko imitated my voice. And me calling out to him should pose no problem with his testimony. Hmm. I guess it does make sense. Are you sure it is Jin that ran away? Uh, yeah. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. What is wrong with you? <laughs> Young Asher, I believe he has made himself clear. Or are you insinuating that the victim was the one that stood up? I was just thinking of the possibility, Commander. Do you have proof? Uh, no. I object on the account that the admirals mean <laughs> just fucking with jack at this point. yes they have chase why did he get chase jen i mean we saw it over sir largo's body and ran off any sane hunter would have tried to capture them especially since we didn't have a way to just reach them for a distance and i was still too far and the rain made it hard to run no way to attack and i was the only one wearing light armor Wait a minute, the bullet! I need to chase them be because nobody has a way to reach them if they got too far already. What did you say? Huh? You said you didn't have a way to attack and reach them from a distance. What is your way of reaching? Uh, Sir Largo told me this before. Either we use, either we try using the environments or what we have on us like our weapons and tools. Commander! I request to add this new information with this testimony. Huh? Will this additional testimony mean anything? Yes, Commander. Very well. The witness will add this to the testimony. Hang on. Reach them if they got too far already. And do you know how long you're chasing Jin for? I don't know, but it was a while. I started getting confused in the forest, so I turned back once I stopped hearing his footsteps. His footsteps? They were pretty big, so it was a bit of so it was a bit a loud running sound. Oh, I'm going to. It was even loud enough that I can still hear them even with the rain pouring, but I guess I wasn't keen enough that they got away. Are you sure you had to chase him because you had no other option? Yeah. Otherwise, he would get away. If they did attack Sir Largo, they needed to be apprehended. I see. Tell they don't have any way to reach them. So why did he not use that? Our evidence... Is it the one that I've been wanting to do? Is it what I've been wanting to do? It is! You're wrong! I believe you're forgetting something, Jack. A again? You mentioned earlier that there's no way for you or your team to be able to reach Jin. But there's something you also said. And that proves that you're actually lying. What?! 
What is the meaning of this, young Asher? What exactly are you talking about? Then let me just show you. If you look at this closely, Commander, there's a bullet I found at the waterfall where the accident took place. This bullet is rather clean and hasn't rusted. This means that it has been dropped there for a few days only. And if there is a bullet found in the water, then there only means someone carrying a ranged weapon that could have reached the suspect. That also means that the one carrying the weapon did not use it in that dire moment. Silence! I am ordering silence! Young Asher, what are you insinuating? Simple, Commander. There was no reason for the Admiral to give that order if one of his men carried a bow gun. And what is your point? What is the point of this current case? We are trying to learn the course of the accident towards Sor Largo, not the suspect. That is true. However, this begs the question, what did you or your hunters not shoot Jin instead? <clears throat> that is because the gun was jammed. I was only able to fix this after I settled in the house. After you settled in? It's pretty bold of you to assume as if you are already guaranteed a win against these monsters. And jammed, highly unlikely, and such a perfect excuse. If there's anything I know about hunting weaponry is that bow guns cannot be jammed that easily. It wasn't jammed, no. The reason you didn't shoot is because... Or are they both correct? You didn't just want to have Jack chase him. You wanted him to escape. And if you let him escape, that can only mean one thing. You've seen them before. And the reason you ordered Jack to chase him was to create a witness. A witness that will remember the features of the one that attacked. I was worried for nothing. What? You've yet to answer my question. What is your point? Well, I... Yes, they have given everyone the idea that I may have known about the village. Let's even say I may have given the wrong order at the time for jokes. My answer is still the same. The suspect attacked the victim! I believe pointing this all out is useless. Ugh! Young Asher, do you have any other arguments about how this correlates to the current case? Commander, I... Let me assist our poor friend here, Commander. He presumes that I knew about this place before I set off on this quest. After we left at a night after where it rained heavily, I assumed that one of the villagers would attack my men. The rookie saw him, and then I ordered to chase the suspect so that I could make a witness. Even if that is true, it doesn't change the fact that this Zenogre attacked one of my men. Oh, apologies, I believe you call him Sir Jin. Not to mention, you failed to say anything to save his case, but just question why I didn't kill him then. We're gonna... We're just gonna keep going. No, I just... Young Asher, I will give you another chance to explain yourself. What is the point of finding an unfired bullet at the scene? It is... Come on, think. There must be another way. Instead of finding the reason for it in the case, I need to think outside of the box. What is the connection of this bullet to this case? Ugh. What if I stop focusing on the bullet, but the owner of the weapon? Weapon can be deadly depending on who's holding it. But who? Who could have held the bow gun? Yeah, we're going to. Young Asher? Looked like you realized something. Commander! I'd like to call into question the owner of the bow gun. You're grasping. Does it even matter who had the bow gun to begin with? There was a bow gun at the scene and... Knowing the owner of the bowgun is vital to knowing why they didn't shoot the suspect. And when you realize who owns the bowgun, it will all make sense. The bowgun was actually owned by none other than the victim himself. Sir Largo was the one who owned the bowgun? Yes, Commander. All we needed to do was confirm it is ask the witness here. Did Sir Largo brought a bowgun in this quest? The Scrivener is badgering the witness. There's no need for him to answer. Dismissed. The witness will answer. I... Jack, it is just a simple question. We need the truth here, and only but the truth. What is Sir Largo's weapon of choice during this quest? Ugh. It was a light bow gun. Silence! I am requiring silence! Young Asher, what does this achieve? It is clear now, Commander. 
the suspect, Jin, could have attacked Sir Largo because he was armed. How oh, can you be so sure about that? It is much simpler if we break it down. Because Sir Largo is armed and the villagers here are not, it would be highly unlikely that anyone will attack Sir Largo unprovoked. It is the same concept to monsters, after all. Monsters don't attack even when they see someone with a weapon. These are either docile monsters or fellow humans. That is a brazen excuse! These are all dangerous monsters. This is an ogre, known to terrorize locals or even the environment. Assuming they didn't attack Sir Largo with was armed as deity, you see. Then let me ask you this, Admiral. Why did you then try to avoid the details about the weapons involved? Ugh! As a hunter, isn't it your first instinct to fight? You're an admiral, and unless I see these lances that your men carry as just them compensating, you did not want to talk about the weapon. And why do you think the admiral didn't want to talk about the weapon? He didn't want to talk about it because... Sorry, but this music is fucking epic. You know what? I feel like tearing him down. He lacked the evidence to prove he did. Of course, there is the wound on his chest, but that hardly counts as evidence as it can be from other reasons. Reasons that may relate to him drowning. The Admiral only gave his opinions as facts without considering the evidence to back it up. Now let me ask you something, Admiral. What other evidence do you have that can prove why Sir Jin attacked Sir Largo? I... Asher brings up a very good point. Commander, these are just speculations. Speculations it may be, but he brings up a very good argument. I cannot fathom that a village who prepares to be hidden to suddenly attack someone unprovoked, much less knowing the victim was armed. Hidden Wavarian villages already exist, and through diplomatic relations we found out they prefer to be hidden because they loathe violence. This does not prove that Sir Jin is free from blame, but if you cannot produce a motive, I cannot, I cannot in fairness have Sir Jin liable. This also includes the attitudes and orders from you, Admiral. This puts your leadership into question. C Commander, I... It's a huge blow to his inflated ego. You don't have proven Jin innocent, but at least I've proven that the witness is unreliable and the Admiral is hiding something. Silence. Jack, you may now join the other hunters. Y yes sir. Young Asher. Yes, Commander? You have a witness to call. A witness? I believe you do not, then, if you question such. Apologies, Commander. I did not- I didn't prepare a witness. Admiral, do you have any other arguments? Admiral? I see. That can work. Commander, since the Scrivener brought up the idea of motive, I would like to return to our discussion before. Discussion? And which one will that be, Admiral? I would like the Scrivener to verify the intent of the residents. So I would like to request that we question one of them. That does make sense. Young Asher, we will have a short recess and we will continue in an hour. In the meantime, please discuss with one of the residents to be the next witness. Admiral, we need to discuss something that has been occupying my mind recently. Sir? We shall reconvene in 30 minutes. That will be all. We're gonna leave off- We're gonna leave off here tonight. We're gaming! Stay safe, have a good night, and I will see you all later because it's now the next day, but otherwise, see you, see you all tomorrow.